Hello creeps! And here, and today I wanted to share with you the books that I read in January. So this is my January wrap up. It was kind of a mixture of reading month for me, some really great stuff, some stuff that I wasn't the biggest fan of. We're just gonna dive right in. That was me diving in. Okay, let's just get started. So I read seven books this month, which is great for me. I was honestly really proud of myself for getting seven books read. I know some people can read like 20 books in a month. I don't know how those people do it. They amaze me, but I'm just, I just can't. So I read 100 pages a day and I got seven books read. And so let's go through and talk about each of the books. The very first book that I read was by Carolyn Kepnes, and this is You. This is the book that the TV show You is based on. It's basically about a guy who works at a bookstore who falls in love with a girl. He's, he begins stalking her and trying to protect her from the other people around. And then the story continues from there. And I've got to say... Uh, I hate not liking books. If you guys watch my videos, you know that I much prefer to focus on the positives, on the good books versus the bad ones. Like I never make videos about the worst books that I read or anything. It's hard, right? Because I know how much work goes into writing. I write stories myself and I know how long it takes to perfect things and how hard writers work on their stuff. And so it just sucks when a book isn't for you. I just don't like saying that because I don't want somebody to not give a book a chance just because I didn't like it. But I will tell you why this book wasn't for me and honestly it's all me. This has great reviews by the way. I think it's like has a four-ish around four stars on Goodreads and a lot of people love it. Even when I posted that I was reading it a few people messaged me and were like oh my gosh I love that book. So just know that I am very biased. I feel like this is a Patrick Bateman trying to be a, an American Psycho story. You guys know American Psycho is one of my favorite books in the world. It even reads like it's trying to be like American Psycho. And to be honest, that just, it was not for me the whole time because that book I think is so genius and so perfect and I feel like I would much rather have a writer do completely their own thing than to try to replicate something else. And that's just my opinion. I didn't see a lot of people saying stuff like that. So maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that feels like that. I will talk a little bit more about this one because I am watching the TV show right now. And so I have a lot to say in comparison to the show. There were just a few things that I couldn't get behind in this book. Like for example, Joe, I, I mean, I don't think I'm giving anything away when he's like, you know, he's a stalker, you know, it's a creepy show, you know, probably bad things happen. And he just like, magically gets away with everything and there are no repercussions for any of his actions and it just seems so bizarre. It's just as unrealistic is I guess what I would say. I also didn't like the characters and although having an unreliable narrator is fun a lot of the time and it's something that I do really enjoy in a lot of books, if I'm reading a book and I don't like anyone, like nobody is good. The girl that he's stalking is annoying. He's annoying. Everyone's annoying. Like it, it's just hard for me to keep attentive and care about the characters in the book when I don't care about them. I'm like, honestly, just take her out. It's fine. And so this book wasn't for me, but a lot of people do enjoy it. And if you like the TV show, I highly recommend picking it up just to see, you know, kind of where it started from. They do take a lot from the book, but it is changed in a way that I think makes a little bit more sense, at least for the screen. My cat chewed the crap out of it, so it tastes good if you are looking for a book to consume, um, maybe this one's for you. But anyways, um, that is You by Carolyn Kepnes. The next book that I read was Darcy Coates' The Ravenous Dead. This is the Gravekeeper, I keep calling it the Gatekeeper series, and I don't know why. It's the Gravekeeper second series. The third one is coming out this year. And so I picked this one up to start January off with the Darcy Coates. And it was a great read, really. I really enjoyed it. The first one was, I feel like, kind of middle range of her writing. And this one I liked more, I think, than the first one. I liked how the characters are set up in the first one, but I really liked the story behind this one. I think it was a little bit more compelling than the first one. So if you guys have read the first one, which is called The Whispering Dead, I highly recommend picking up The Ravenous Dead, and then we can read the third one together this year when it comes out. Um, oh, I should probably say what it's about. It's about a girl who wakes up in the woods and doesn't remember who she is or where she came from. There are men chasing her. She makes her way into a town and she ends up befriending people and staying um, in a little cottage behind a graveyard and finds out that she can speak to the dead. And so this one, she learns a little bit more about her past, 
although not a lot is revealed, which I liked, so I think the third one's gonna be really fun. We get a little bit more deeper knowledge of the characters and like how bonded they are in this one, which is really nice, and then you get some ghosts and creepy stuff as well. So I did really enjoy that one. Next up, I read Mary Kubica's Don't You Cry. So I read my first Mary Kubica novel last year and loved it. I still have a place mark in it from the last part that I read and finished. I read her, one of her books last year. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head now. Oh, it's like Local Missing Woman or Missing Local Woman or something like that. And I adored that book. So I found this at my bookstore for like $2.50 and I had to pick it up and I read it and um, I didn't like it as much as that one. This one is just, if you want like this super, super, super slow paced novel, then this one's for you. It's about a girl whose roommate goes missing and she starts to like find out all this weird stuff her roommate was doing before she went missing. And then you're also cut between what's happening there and then also this guy who's following this girl around and the story all comes together. I would say that the last maybe 80 pages are kind of where the story comes together, but it's not like a <gasps> kind of story. It's just like a, oh, it's just like a slow read. I do enjoy her writing a lot and I thought it was a good book. I thought that it was, it was fine. I just, it wasn't as upbeat and intense as the local missing woman book was. But if you want like a very, 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 very slow read, but still interesting and fun, then this one might be for you. This one was the next one that I read. It was called Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This one was about these women who commit suicide by jumping into the water or were like drowned in the water like decades back or uh, centuries back in some cases and it's about these women who have committed suicide but the entire town it's really interesting because you get very uh, varying perspectives and everyone's kind of pointing fingers at everyone else no one's really telling the full truth and you kind of get like a weird wrap around of what's going on. I really enjoyed this one and this one didn't have that high of ratings and I was confused why and then I went on Goodreads and read the reviews and it was like I liked the girl on the train better and I was like but it's a different book. <laughs> what do you mean? I like the girl on the train too but this is a completely different story and people are like you didn't get you know that one character perspective like you did on a girl on the train. I didn't like it. And I'm like well you, you can't because everyone's lying and everyone's holding things back. You find out very minimal about each person and I just thought that it was interesting that people in at least in the reviews that I saw were heavily comparing it to the girl on the train. I feel like it kind of did a disservice to this book because this book was really great. It was really well written. I thought that the story was intriguing. It was interesting being like, oh, she's lying. Oh, but you're also lying. Ooh, what's actually going on here? I really liked the story. I thought that it was it was great. I'm not really sure how fair that is to read a book and solely compare it to a previous book that an author has written. But I really liked this and I think that this will be in my summer recommendations too, so look out for that. And then the next book that I read I, was Hidden Pictures by Jason, I, I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong because now I can't remember how it's pronounced, Rekulak. And I did an entire video on this, so I'll leave that linked down below in case you were interested in that. This was uh, voted the best horror book in the 2022's Goodreads awards. It's about a girl who was a drug addict, or she's a recovering drug addict, and she ends up being a, getting a job as a babysitter for this like pretty well-off couple. He starts telling her about this imaginary friend that he is seeing, and she believes that it's somehow connected to the woman who disappeared in the cottage that she lives, like a, what do you call that? Like a house behind a house, a guest house, a few decades past. So she goes on like a journey to try to convince the parents that it's the ghost of that girl that's haunting the boy. Um, I, I think I mean, I think I talked a lot in that video about how I felt about this book. It was just a little bit outside of my suspension of disbelief and I should have probably prefaced the last video by saying that it's really hard for me to get into ghost stories. Like there are very few ghost stories that I actually like reading because they're just all, they're just not really for me. This one was one of those ones where I was like, okay, look, like it was a fun story. I enjoyed reading it, but it, it definitely wasn't um, what I expected it to be. And it was a little bit outside of my suspension of disbelief to like fully dive into the novel and be invested in the story as much as maybe some people were. Again, that book got fantastic ratings. 
The next one that I read was The Whisper Man by Alex North. This book, oh my gosh, I just leave. Every time I finish a book, I just leave my, my little guys in there. Okay, this book was so good. This book was so good. I read um, a different Alex North book, the, uh, the something about a shadow or something. I can't remember the title now. And I did really enjoy that. And it was so funny too, because I read that book and I was going through some stuff and then I was reading and the character was like kind of going through what I was going through. And I just felt like I needed to read that at that time. And it was really interesting reading this book as well. Yeah, it was just like, I felt like a book that I needed to read right now. It is so good. This was the best book that I read in January hands down. It's about a man who is abducting young boys. Oh, man, there's so much of the story. I don't even, I, I don't even know how to explain it. And then there's a man who moves into a house with a young boy and the young boy is like kind of creepily saying and doing things and like kind of creeping the dad out a little bit. I guess what I'm trying to say is at the base of the story, like the themes in the story, there's a lot of themes related around grief and guilt and uh, generational trauma and childhood trauma and like that cycle of, of um, I don't know if abuse is the right word, but breaking the cycle and like maybe making your life better than the life that you had before, but maybe still fucking up your kids along the way. I don't know. This book was fantastic. And then there's also the cop who kind of gets inside information from a guy in jail, like another serial killer in jail, to find out who is abducting these kids. And then there's also like butterflies. So you get a kind of like a Hannibal Lecter sprinkle in there, a little silence of the lambs, like, you know? But man, this story is so good. It is so well written. I loved every second of it. And I just found out too that Alex North is releasing a new book this year too. So he has a new book coming out called The Angel Maker, February 28th. So I'm very excited for that one because this book honestly blew me away. The next one that I read was Grady Hendrix's How to Sell a Haunted House. This was my first experience with Grady Hendrix. So the book just threw me for a loop because I did not know what to expect. I did not know what his writing was like. And I thought that it was about selling a haunted house, which I guess it kind of is, but this one too, it's kind of about like the way that I read it, it was kind of, I feel like a metaphor for like generational trauma and handing things down to your children. It kind of had a lot of similarities with the Alex North book, which is interesting when you read books back to back that have common themes or ideas or what have you. It always trips me out. Like of all the books in the world, I read these together and there's some similarity in there. And then the weird thing was the book that I read after this references something that was in this book too. And so I thought that was weird that three books in a row were connected. I was like, oh, that's odd. But anyways, this is about a young girl who goes back to a how her parents house when she, where she grew up because her parents have passed away. So she kind of has to wrap things up with her brother and, you know, figure out the estate and things like that. Basically at its core, I don't want to give too much away. I don't think it says anything in here. What I'll say is it's not about ghosts in a traditional sense. It's a very campy book. And from what I can gather, I think that's maybe how he writes is like a little bit more campy, kind of like you're watching an 80s horror film, maybe like a B horror film. That's how I felt about this. It kind of threw me off. It just was not at all what I was expecting. And then after reading that the Alex North book, which just hit me in a way that a book hasn't in a while. And then reading this one, it just, um, yeah, haunted house stuff just isn't for me. It just, it's just not something that keeps me super engaged. I'm so glad that I read it. I'm glad that I gave it a chance and I do have another one of his books. Well, I guess I have two of his books. I have the paperbacks from Hell, but that's not really like a cohesive fictional novel, but um, I do have another one of his books that I'm definitely gonna try out too. But now going into it, knowing that it's more of like a campier, funny, silly, it doesn't take itself too seriously type of book, I think that it won't throw me off so much. So there's that one. And then the last one that I read, my friends, is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I have read this one before. My cat did chew the absolute crap out of it. This one is about a couple and their uh, child who go on a summer vacation in the middle of the woods. People show up at their house. They tell them that they must make a sacrifice 
or the entire world will end. I don't think I'm gonna go in too much detail about this one because the movie is coming out Friday, I think. So I'm going to watch the movie and do a whole movie first book. That's why I reread this guy this year. So yeah, keep a uh, lookout for that. I'm excited about that, but I love that book. It's it's such a fun book. I really do like the Paul Tremblay books, books that I have read. That's not my favorite Paul Tremblay. I prefer A Head Full of Ghosts, but I just, I love his writing. I think that he's such a great writer and he's like definitely right up my alley. Like his style of writing is what I absolutely love reading. So those are the books that I read in January. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, why didn't you read The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis? Weren't you so excited to buy that book? Yes. Yes, I was. I was so excited, in fact, that I bought a signed copy from Barnes & Noble. And so they, you couldn't pick it up in stores. You had to ship it to you. I'm like, that's okay. I can wait a few days to read it. And then it came to me. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that it came broken. Like the entire spine was broken. I was very sad. So I had to take it back and then return it and then get a new copy sent to me. And it just came like a day or two ago. And I started reading it last yesterday last night so I am now reading the shards that will be in my February wrap up so keep a lookout for that otherwise let me know what you guys have read this year this year this month and um, I will see you soon with another horror video I will catch you on um, hopefully Sunday with the movie verse book for the cabin at the end of the world okay see you later bye mm -hmm.